Shalom brothers and sisters and welcome to another Daughters of Sarah. Today's lesson is Hit It and Quit It. This lesson is for the young men and women of the Most High who have not found themselves as of yet. And if they have, they are still practicing the same lifestyle that they had before they found him. We know we are the true Israelites of the Bible, which is our history book. When we come into the knowledge of the Most High, we have to put away sin and give our body as a living sacrifice unto the Most High. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of the Most High, that ye present your body a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that what is good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. Fornication in the New Testament means having sex without being married to each other. In the Old Testament, it means all sexual sins was prohibited by the Most High because the pagan used sexual acts in their rituals to their God and to please them. Adultery is when a marriage person have sex with someone other than their spouse. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 2 to 3 says, Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife do benevolence, likewise also the wives unto the husband. Ephesians 5 verse 22 to 29. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband, as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husband in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkles or any such thing, but that it should be holy without blemish. So are husbands to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself, for no man ever yet hate his own flesh, but nourish it and cherish it, even as the Lord, the church. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 and 4 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may be well with thee, and thy may live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, bring them up in the nourishing and the admonishing of the Most High. Proverbs 22 verse 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old he should not depart from it. What a wonderful marriage it would be if every Israelite man and woman obeyed these commands instead of the way the world tell you your life should be. The world says, fornication is not wrong, and all kinds of sexual perversion are not wrong if your spouse go along with it. You can't get a divorce just because you want one. Your children can have you put in jail and take it away from you if you discipline them. Children can't even take you to court and divorce you as a parent. You can have more than one wife. You can take your husband or wife down to court and have him and her locked up for child support. The woman can be head of household. Now you can't even marry the same sex you are. You can abort your babies whenever you want to. You will be able to marry animals soon. It's already legal in Europe. Children can pick what gender they want to be, and parents cannot go against it because they risk the chance of having their parental rights taken away. What an immoral world that hate the laws of the Most High, which is righteousness, but love and obey the laws that goes against the Most High, which is evil. All these things you will not have to worry about if the Israelite man and woman that is truly living for the Most High stop looking to the world for advice on how to manage your life. But let the Most High join you together and lead your life. Be patient and stop giving your body away. It is the most precious thing you have to offer your spouse. Stop being a liberal woman. 60% of true Israelite women are free thinkers today. 
This is why some of our men and women of our nation hate and separate from each other. This is what the most I have to say about that. Jeremiah chapter 17, 9 says, The heart is the most deceitful thing above all things, desperately wicked. Who can know it? This verse is saying, The mind is the most deceitful thing there is, and all it thinks about is sin. And who can know it? Only the most high. If you are a virgin, stay that way until the most high send you a spouse. I know it can be a lonely life until that happens, but it is best. So you will not have to go through the pain of a sinful life, having children out of wedlock, and end up in hell. Remember, fornication will send you to the lake of fire. When a husband and wife is being led by the Most High, there will be peace. You would have your ups and downs, but you would be able to solve those problems by the Most High. And that will make a worthwhile stand together. Mark chapter 10 verse 9. For well, therefore, if the Most High have joined together, let no man put asunder. Meaning no one should separate a marriage that the Most High has joined together. There are Israelite men and women who need to transfer their minds and become husbands to the Israelite women and become wives to the Israelite men and stop treating each other as they do and stop marrying strange women and men from other nations. Why do you want the Most High to be angry with you? That's why a lot of Israelite men are dying in the streets by the hands of those who hate us. These men from other nations hate when black Israelite men marry women from their nation. That's why many of our brothers is being killed, not just because they are black, but for marrying women of other races. And the Most High is angry at you too. The only people that seem they do not understand this is the true Israelites. Deuteronomy Chapter 7, verse 3 and 4 says, Neither shall thy mate marriage with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his daughters, nor his daughters shall thou take unto thy sons. For they will turn away thy sons from following me, and they shall serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and destroy thee suddenly. Think about how many Israelite men that have married women of other races and served other gods by joining the secret societies selling their soul to the devil for fortune and fame, and the Israelite women do too. They die from drugs, alcohol, diseases. They take their own lives or get murdered by the same devil who they serve. He takes that soul early before they can change their minds and come to the knowledge of who they are or when they are not usable anymore or tired of the rat race. The saddest thing is that they are taken out before they can repent and come back to their Creator and Savior, the Most High, and cannot take anything that they sold their soul for. Matthew 16, 26 says, For what is a man profit if he should gain the whole world and lose his soul? And what should a man get in exchange for his soul? Listen, brothers and sisters, the only thing you got to look forward to is that you are going to die and be judged for your deeds. Hebrew chapter 9 verse 27 says, And it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. So if you are being told that when you die, it is the end of everything, that is one of the biggest lies ever told. You have to stand in front of the Almighty Judge to see where you are going to stay for eternity, heaven or hell. You will definitely go to one of them. Revelation 20 verse 11 and 15 says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before the Most High. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book, according to their work. And the sea gave up the dead which was in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which was in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell was cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So you can see no one is going to escape judgment from the Most High, even if they had died. Joshua 23, 12 to 13. Else, if ye do in any wise go and clean unto the remnant of these nations, even these that remain among you, and shall make marriage with them, and go unto them, and they to you. Know for as certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you, and scourge in your side, and thorns in your eyes, 
until you perish from off the good land which the Lord your God have given you. Deuteronomy 28:68, Thou shalt see it no more again, and they shall be sold unto your enemies for bondwomen and bondmen. No one shall buy you. Bondwomen and bondmen mean slaves. The Israelite men and women who sold, who were sold to their enemies, are not supposed to marry out of their race or tribe. It is against the Most High. All the nations seem to know this except the true Israelite men and women. As you can see, all the things that have happened to our men and women all these years for getting involved with men and women of other nations. Horror stories can be read about it. Go to the internet or read a book on the subject about these stories. The story of Samson and Delilah in Judges chapter 13 to 16. Samson who was chosen by the Most High to be a judge of Israel, but had three women who all was Gentile. But he fell in love with Delilah, who betrayed him to the Philistines for 700 pieces of silver by telling the Philistines where his strength lies. He was the strongest man that ever lived. It caused him his eyes to be put out, thrown into prison and death. That's why you men should not you, you, that's why you men should love a woman and not be in love with one. She would become your idol, and you would, you would do anything for her. Some would even kill for her if she asked, and even turn away from the Most High. This kind of love can even put her in danger for her life. That is one reason why a lot of women is being killed by men today. Falling in love can stem from infatuation, a possessiveness, and obsession. Other words, it goes beyond physical presence. You always need that person around you, and you feel that way without balance. Loving someone, on the other hand, you will want that person around you, but you will have balance. It would just mean you love that person and enjoy their company. Being in love have many emotions. There are highs and lows in this kind of love. Someone with this kind of love is blind to reality. That's why a lot of our women is being killed these days by men and some women who kill men too, having this infatuation. And doesn't get, don't get me wrong, some can just be hateful. There is a story also in 1 Kings chapter 19 through 22 about a king named Ahab, who was the king of Israel, who married a Gentile woman named Jezebel, who killed many of the most high prophets and had the people to worship her god Baal. And her husband, King Ahab, went along with it, and he did evil in the sight of the Most High more than any king that was before him. She even tried to kill the prophet Elijah and stole a man's land just because the king wanted it, and the man refused to sell it to him. So she had the man killed and took his land, and Ahab accepted the land, and went along with her by turning his back on the Most High and had the people to worship Jezebel God, Baal, instead of the Most High. Ezra 10 44. All these had taken strange wives. Some of them had wives, and by whom they had children. Ezra chapter 10, verses 10 through 11. And Ezra the priest stood up and said unto them, Ye have transgressed and have taken strange wives to increase the trespass of Israel. Now therefore make confession unto the Lord God of your father, and do his pleasure, and separate yourself from these strange wives. They was unfaithful to the Most High, and the results were the birth of pagan children. Therefore the Most High said he would devour them with their fields. That means whatever they had, it would do them no good, because the men of our nation started to marry women of other nations first. So that left Israelite women no choice but to marry men out of their race, and start dressing and acting like the Gentile women from the other nations because they thought that what the men of our nation wanted. That is why some Israelite women are so easy to be led into sin and abused by the Israelite men. And this is why. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 2 and 6. For men should be lovers of their own selves. Covenant, boasters, pride, blasphemers, disobedient to their parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, true breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those who are good, 
traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than the lovers of the Most High, have the form of godliness, but not the power of their earth, for such turn away. For this sort are they which creep into houses and leave captive silly women, lazy with sin, lead away with divers love, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. The Bible says, these men and women are led by lust and have many sins that they do. And these sins blind them so they never can see the wrong or the simple things they are doing or that is being done to them. Some know it but do not want to give up sinning because they love it. They never come to the knowledge of the truth of the Most High and how you can change them and make them unto a person who love and care about themselves and others in the right way. The Most High said this is one of the reasons why the Israelite men and women should not marry out of their race. Ezra 9, 12. Now therefore, give not your daughters unto their sons, neither take their daughters unto your son, neither seek their peace or their wealth forever, that ye may be strong and eat the good of the land and leave it for an inheritance to your children forever. What do forever mean? When an Israelite man and woman marries someone from another nation, whatever inheritance they have, that inheritance go to that nation and not to the Israelite nation. Make it our nation poor and that nation richer. Also, we will serve their pagan gods. Then there is many young Israelite women who want to get married today, but do not know the duties of a good wife or a mother because they too liberal and this evil world have filled their mind with the traditions that have dumbed them down, which have made the Israelite woman, men and women to lose respect for each other. Therefore, many of the Israelite women look forward to a career instead of being a wife. This is also happened because many Israelite women have accepted the things of this world and have made many young Israelite ladies not to know how to maintain a household or take care of a family as a woman. Here are some basic things that the wife should know to do. And if you are one of those who is conformed to this world, start learning how to manage a household. She should bring unity and structure to our household, not tearing it down. Her job is to make sure her household have clean clothing, bedding, cook healthy meals, pay bills, grocery shopping, discipline their children as her husband directs her to, make sure her children are in good health, Educate her daughters about this evil world by helping her to develop mentally, physically, and emotionally. And all this is done by reading and studying her history book, the Bible. Also, the mother is a female model, and her adult present is teaching her female child or children how to recognize the difference between the role of a male and female, and how to adapt to the female role. Today, the woman wants to be in that male role in the house and be head of the household, which is against the Most High. She should teach her daughter not to run the streets, stay home, and take care of her husband and children. Also, on having a problem, do not talk about her problem to people. You both should be able to talk it over with the knowledge of the Most High guiding you praying and fasting about it. Remember, when you take your problem to the Most High, that is far as it going. Many men seem to think after having a child, they have done their duty, and that make him a father. That only means the child that you have, you only share the DNA. A father is supposed to be there to guide the child mentally, physically, and emotionally, and to show his son the role of being a man, a husband, and a father with love and care. Proverbs 22 6 said, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now, we're going to see what the Bible has to say about fornication. This is what the Bible has to say about it. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 says, Flee fornication, for every sin that a man does, it, it is without the body. But he that commit fornication sinneth against his own body. Matthew 19, 9 says, And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, shall marry another, commit adultery. And whosoever marry her, which is put away, does commit adultery. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9 and 11 say, Know ye 
not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of the Most High, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulteries, nor effeminate, meaning men or women who act or dress like the opposite sex, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, homosexuality. This verse is saying, be not deceived, you will not go into heaven of the Most High if you commit these sins. Hebrew 13, 4 says, marriage is honorable in all, the bent undefilable, but homemongers and adulterers the Most High will judge. This means the marriage bed is clean in the eyes of the Most High. Fornication make it unclean. 1 Corinthians 7 and 2 said, Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman her own husband. Leviticus 20, 10 says, The man that commit adultery with another man's wife, even he that commit adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adultery and the adulteress should surely be put to death. But now you have time to repent for it and ask for forgiveness and stop doing it. This is the time of grace, meaning you have time to repent for your sins. You will not die for sin that call for immediately death sentence like they did in the biblical times. These things are considered fornication, masturbation. Masturbation is the sexual stimulation of one's own genitals for sexual arouse. It opened the door for an impure, lascivious spirit come into you, then it is difficult to get rid of them. As this world is today, it is not good to be taken over by demons. It is hard to get rid of them in this world of false prophets. It can only be gotten rid of if you pray, fast, and ask, and seek the Most High with all your heart and soul, and believe He can do it, and ask the Most High to forgive you for this sin and stop doing it. Matthew 21 to 22 says, In all things, Whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. Incest can cause the victim to be emotionally cold, feel retracted from people that can destroy homes and even the person's life own life. You should not have sex with your father, mother, aunts, uncles, sisters, brothers, granddaughters or grandsons, daughter-in-laws or son-in-laws, father's wife or the daughters of your father's wife or her brother, do not take a wife of her sister. Do not have sex with your father's daughter of another woman. Do not have sex with the woman, neither her daughter, or her daughter's daughter, or her son's daughter, which is forbidden by the Most High, because all these are close of kin. Do not have sex with two sisters. This can start big problems. It can make them hate each other, and both could have a baby by you. This is confusion. I've seen it happen, and the problem it brought, it was one of the saddest things for the children that i ever seen. Incest is an abomination unto the Most High. Bestiality is when a person has sex with the animal. This is confusing and weakness. Something can be born that is half animal and half human. Exodus chapter 22 verse 19 says, Whosoever lay with the bee shall surely be put to death. There ain't no questions asked. Just put them to death. We can't do it now. But when the Most High come, you will be put to death if you do any sin. The next one is sexual fantasies, which is impulsive, immoral acts. We are warned by the Most High that a man is guilty of both bond and physical acts. For this reason, pornography must, not be, must be avoided because it can lead to having sex with different partners, filthy acts of all kinds, rapes, sexual crim crimes such as that related to murder and use of sexual materials. Matthew 5 28 said, But I say unto you that whosoever look on a woman and lust after her have committed adultery with her already in his heart. Homosexuality and lesbianism. This can be a generation curse if it's not stopped, which cause rejection of the body gender, sexual abuse, rebellious against parents, all this brain demon possession. Most of these people go against their parents' wishes and go against their gender and take on the gender of the opposite sex. This is one of the hardest demon possession to overcome without the help of the Most High and faith in Him. Leviticus 20.13 says, If a man lie with mankind as he lie with womankind, both of them have committed abomination, and they shall surely be put to death, and their blood shall be upon their head. Genesis 2.25 says, they were naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. The Most High made women, man and woman, not man and man, to be together as one flesh. Genesis 
verse 24 says, Therefore should a man leave his father and mother, and should cleave unto his wife, and they should be one flesh. Romans 1, chapter 126 says, For this call the Most High give them into well affection, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. The women begin to lust after one another, which is not natural. Also, pedophilia. It is when you like to have sex with children, which also called masturbation, sexual fancies, incest, murder, and using sexual materials on children. Then there's sadism. It is sexual perversion where valor and pain is used to obtain sexual pleasure. This practice dishonors the body and prevent the nature of human relationship and is offensive to the Most High. Sex should be for the benefit of one another, showing love and concern for one another, not demonstrating a desire for control and dominating. All the above fornication acts, if you do them, you will not inherit the kingdom of the Most High. If you are not going to be in the Most High Kingdom, where you think you are going to be? After you die and been resurrected back to life to be judged, in other words, you will not escape judgment for these sins or any other sin that you committed. Hebrew chapter 9, 20, 27 says, And it is pointed unto man once to die, but after this to judgment. We should not have a strong sexual desire to engage in fornication as the nations, because they know not the Most High, so they would do anything that is against the Most High. Also to please their false gods. So keep yourself set apart from these sexual things and do what you are called to do with your body. That will bring honor to the Most High. Romans 6, 19 says, I speak after the matter of me, because of the infirmities of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members' service to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness unto holiness. So stop fornicating and committing adultery that will surely send you to hell and start obeying the commandments of the Most High. Be the husband and wife or the man and woman the Most High command us to be. You should not be a hit it and quit it man or woman just hanging around for benefits and sex. We are the sons and daughters of the Most High and we should be treated and act like who we are, the sons and daughters of the Most High. Not like the people of the world who say everything goes, do as thou wilt. Telling us how to live should only be done by the Most High our Savior. Sin is when a man and woman who is not married to each other but just sleep together for the sake of sex or to make life more comfortable, less expensive, and thinking two is better than one living together as a couple, but never went through the marriage ceremony. Matthew 5, 28 says, But I say unto you that whosoever look on a woman to lust after her, committed adultery with her already in his heart. So if you live with a woman and not married to her, you are committing adultery. When you look at her with lust, you know that lust because you will not be with her if you did not like the way she looked. So why not make it right in the eyes of the Most High and marry each other? Every Israelite should want to go through an Israelite ceremony to be married and keep the state out of their marriage. So you young girls and older women and men, this is why many of us get into trouble and get treated as we do because you go out looking for a man or woman using the internet instead of letting the man look for you that's why some of us are treated bad if our men can look for women strange women let them look for you and not look for them proverbs 18 22 says whosoever finds their wife finds a good thing obtain favor with the most high the bible says the man is supposed to look for the wife not the wife looking for the husband and when you Israelite men go looking for a woman to wife, make sure she is wife material. Every woman is not that wife material. That means strange women too. But our men do not care if Betsy is wife material. He still want her just because she is Betsy and do not care how she looks. That's why the Most High said, whosoever finds a wife finds a good thing. And he's not talking about Gentile woman, but Israelite woman. Every Israelite man is not husband material either. But she can become a wife, and he can become a husband if they let the Most High lead them in their life. And that is the only way. So sisters, stop picking up build the bear men who have nothing and have no thought of getting anywhere in life, whether it be physical or spiritual. These women bring these type of men into their home. 
thinking that she could change him, and in many cases, he is lifted up. Then he leaves you for another woman, sometimes it's after you is fallen to the bottom by helping him, and he leaves you with one or two children or more of his, and then you start all over again with another man. It seems like all these women do not learn from life and sin lessons. Like the Bible say, they never come to the knowledge of the truth. The reason why, because you do not read and study the word of the Most High and do not seek his help. And if they do, they're only hearers of the word and not doers of it. Then there's the hungry jack who come and eat all your food from you and your children and never give you anything back. And he will take your money and spend it on another woman and put you in an abusive situation and may even steal money from you and command you to do for whatever he tells you. Some have you as the layaway girl. He has been promising you that he is going to marry you and you have been with him for the last two years or more, but you see no marriage in the future for you with him. Like the old folks say, why buy the cow when you get the milk free? These women buy these men everything possible, thinking it will show him she cared for him instead of her letting the man show how he cared for her. Then there's the selfish banker. He worked but do not give you any money. He wants you to pay all the bills out of your money, or he may just pay one bill and you is on your own for the rest of them. But he may give you some money if you are having trouble paying the bill for a month. And that's only because you is telling him everything is going to shut down in the house. After that, you are back on your own again. Then there's the baby maker that keep you pregnant. But he never going to marry you and have babies all over town. But do not want you to find a man that will love and marry you. Whenever he sees a man that is interested in you and may marry you, he come back and break that relationship up and leave it again and may even marry someone else. Then there's the game player that stay home and play games every chance he get. He work, but he not show you any attention and do nothing in the house, but just play that game machine. And the only thing he, ma only thing that matters, can you play the game with him? Then there is the pleasure man. This man only wants you when other women are not paying attention to him, and he is in trouble and needs your shoulders to hang on and tell you he is going to change and give you stars the moon, everything else he can think of. And as soon as he starts getting attention from other women and his problem is solved, he is up and going again until the next time. Then there's the killer man. A lot of women get involved with these men because they go into the relationship blind. And they ask no questions and go for what he look like. And he got money that even make it even better. Most young ladies and some older women do not know what they are looking for in a man. They just take him at face value. A man or a woman should know what they want in a person. They want to call their spouse and parents of their children. But you have to have patience. So when he or she come, you may know that's the one for you. Then there is the manipulator. These are men in the prison system that promise women they will marry them when they are released from prison. This woman, with a vivid imagination, will do anything for that inmate to keep him happy by sending money for all his prison needs while also visiting him. Most of the time, you are not the only woman they have helping them. There is other black ex-girlfriends. I just want to know how can you expect these men to keep their promise when they do not know if they will be able to secure a job or if he is the working type. Remember, they are programmed and institutionalized and they have lived with a designated bedtime curfew for months or years of his adult life. These who have been an inmate in prison is very easy to build up anger and a frustration and have a lot of emotional problems. So you expect him to answer and take orders from you about his whereabouts? The women who date these men have been damaged in their early lives and abused by someone. They are hurting inside and think that having a man in prison he cannot hurt them, and they are in control of that relationship. And they come from all different backgrounds, rich and poor, and different levels of education. Most say they are in love, which blind them to the reality of life. They try to rationalize a way or tone down the crimes and excuse of these men. Don't you know that some men you pick up, you cannot get rid of that easy, but only by death? These are the hang-on men. 
as they said, I love you to death. These men is jealous of you and do not want to see you have anything, not even a good job that's played better than them. He's angry at you all the time. He do not want to see you enjoy yourself with family members or others. They keep you isolated from people and is very dominating and a stalker and always abusing you with words or hitting you and some women like some women are like this too. Then there is the carrier and the one nighters or the ones who stay the weekends only looking for a good time. The young men and ladies today go to the internet and invite these people into their homes without knowing anything about him or her. They don't even know if they are a man or a woman. And some do not even know their in, their names and if they are the person they say they are. They don't even know these people's background or this person have a disease or mental illness with AIDS and about 25 other STDs out there that you can catch and you have not even heard of with no cure for them. You should be afraid because what you get that night can last you a lifetime and even cause death to you. I visit a nursing home and I never saw so many young sick people with diseases in nursing homes in my life and I used to work at one. Then there's the relief baggers. The only time you see this man is when he cannot find a sex partner for the night and he come knocking at your door at midnight or early in the morning and that would be the only time you would see him until the next time he cannot find a relief bag for the night. If this is the only kind of men or women you can draw to you, stay by yourself until the Heavenly Father send you a good spouse. There are some good brothers and sisters out there that are looking and praying for the same thing you are, a good spouse, but they are patient because they love themselves in the Most High. James 1.17 said, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of light, who is no vibrantness and neither shadows of turning. Just remember this, when the Lord send you a man or a woman, he or she will not be unsettled and no darkness will be in them for you because it will be a godly love for you and it will be a love guided by the most high laws that he has set up for husband and wife relationship. He will know he's supposed to provide for his wife and family and you will know that you will be taken care of and loved and protected by him and you can help out if needed and you will do it with pride and love. 1 Timothy 5, 8 said, But if any provide not for his own, especially for those of his own household, he have denied the faith and is worth it than an infidel. I mean sinner. Genesis 2, 18. And the Most High said, It is not good that man should live alone. I will make him a helpmate. That means a husband and wife, not boyfriend and girlfriend. In the Bible, there is no such thing. Each one of you should love and be a help to one another and do not want to do any harm to one another. In the Bible, if you was engaged, you cannot live together until you was married. Exodus 22:16. And if a man entreat a maid that was not betrothed and he lied with her, he should surely endow her to be his wife. If her father utterly refused to give her to him, he should pay money according to the diary of a virgin. This Verses saying, if a man lie with a woman that is not engaged, he should make her his wife. But if the father do not want to give her as his wife, he should pay the price of a virgin. What less probably it would be today if our nation obeyed all these laws that the Most High commands us to do in our marriage and life. Just sit back and think about it. It would be no children out of wedlock. The man would not have sex but with the woman he want to marry because he cannot afford to pay every time he had sex with a virgin and do not want to marry her. And if she was engaged to a man and had sex with another man, she went along with it, you both would be put to death. So sisters and brothers come together and love each other. First John 13, 34 says, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I love you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all be known that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one another. Salome, brothers and sisters.